so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of look at the how I did on the rough scraping of the tip. I did much better on one side than the other. So I'm going to start on the side that um, is thicker. And I'm going to get the, the tip vibrating. I always start at the very tip with little strokes and lengthen back. And oh, this knife is delightfully sharp since I just cleaned my stone. It's amazing what a difference it makes. So once I get that path sort of established, I can go ahead and start and move forward. But initially, when I am beginning to scrape the tip, I always start with just real tiny strokes. And I believe those of you who are of my vintage will probably recognize that as a suggestion from Jay Light. He always said, start from the tip and move back. And that just has always stuck with me. It helps make sure that you have a nice slope going down from the tip. Does it take longer? Yes. But in the end, is it worth it? Yes. Okay. And then, because I'm an obsessive compulsive sharpener, and I love a sharp knife, I tend to sharpen every time I flip the blade. Let's see, even I'm not going to leave this side really yet until I get this side looking even side to side as well. Oh, I got to move up. I got to remember to keep my hands a little bit centered for you guys. Or should I say for all of you that are watching. So the other thing that I like to do is make sure that I'm using all of my knife, right? And the reason for that thinking is that every stroke takes a little bit of edge off your knife. So by constantly having my blade in motion, I'm kind of always using the sharp surface. And I can tell when it's starting to not grip the cane, but I'm uh, one of those people that sharpens throughout the process because I can't stand it when the cane doesn't grab or the knife doesn't grab the cane. That's what takes, makes your reed making last forever. I mean, if your knife is sharp, you can, you know, power through things pretty quickly. Well, you can really hear that that's thick. I have the sound it's making off the end of the tip. And I mean, I'm not being terribly meticulous about V's or anything like that. I just want to get the tip vibrating. Excuse me. Um, that's very resistant. Very resistant. And I just checked it in the light, and you can see I don't have the same angles happening yet. They're close. But it's, it's still not even. So we go a little bit further trying to get that tip to really vibrate. And it doesn't have to vibrate perfectly. It doesn't have to be as easy. Um, we have a little bit of scale that we use in the CMU Oboe Studio, studio one being ridiculously easy, five being your head feels like it's going to explode. Um, and 
when you're just starting the tip. If you can get it in a two and a half range, like somewhere between two and three. So it's a little resistant. It's not all the way there, but it's enough of it is vibrating that you can tell that the vibrations are moving. That's where you want it to be. If you go too far, your tip will get too thin too soon. And then you're going to get whistles and chirps and birds and all kinds of things. It's also real important that we try to keep the pitch up as much as we can as we build the reed. Um, and that helps keep us from clipping a lot so that we really can get the best parts of the reed going. Gosh, am I drifting off camera? I don't even know. I wasn't even looking. The hardest part about doing this on camera is that I have to position my eyes and my hands in a slightly different way. The sacrifices I make for my people that like this stuff. Okay. All right. I'll sh do a backlight shot in a second. It's getting better. It's getting better. But it still is not enough. There we go. It is still not where I want it. So, let's see. Who's giving me problems? Which side is thicker? I think that we're going to go with taking a little more off this side. Uh, and I'm trying to move that plaque so it's as close to the edge as possible so that I'm not rubbing the side of the plaque with my knife. I'm a little nervous because it does seem to move. That plaque is moving a little bit more than I'd like it to. Even though when this one was dry, the sides were real tight. Okay, there we go. That was some nice cane. Okay, I'm going to curl it and then I'm going to show you um, something kind of interesting. Now we're getting closer. Now, what's cool about that is, and I'm hoping you can see, there you go. That's pretty good. You can tell that this blade is much thinner because you can see more of the slope of the tip, right? Especially on this blade. So now I'm going to go up and I'm going to match them. And once I do that, that tip crow is going to be right where I want it. So this is the um, thinned side. You can even tell there's just more definition right there. Um, and now I'm going to get this side to kind of match that. So I want to work that back little tiny bit, just a little bit more, the back of the tip. Don't dig out too much, because if you do, you're going to get birds and chirps. Okay. doesn't concern me that I just ripped that little bit of my corner off, because I already know I'll be clipping that away. And see, that's what the other thing that I like, is that my knife tends to find the cane with the way I sharpen it and the way the burr is set. I let the knife kind of pull and grab whatever it feels like is standing up. That's much better. Okay. 
So once I get that sound, then I'm like, okay, let's try to get the the um, locro in. And just for factual or purposes, that's like a D, D sharp. I mean, that's really up there. But that's okay. This is, again, another piece of really nice cane. Um, and so you know, I should probably measure for the people at home. The back of this tip is about four millimeters. The middle of the tip is about three. Okay, just so to give you some perspective. All right. I think, you know what, I'm gonna go a little bit farther. I want to get it just a little bit thinner. So I'm going to again look here and kind of compare my slopes. And I just think, yeah, I still think I've got extra cane, especially on this left hand side. There you go. Thank you, Mr. Knife. Now it did so well, now I have to make the other side look like that. There we go. Wow, this cane is hard. I know many of you may wonder, where is this cane, hard cane coming from? I gotta be honest and tell you, I don't know. I have like these bins that I must have sorted cane you know, years ago, and I've just been kind of going through them and using stuff that looks good. Ah, good, okay. You're like, why did she say good? So I did this kind of on purpose because I know a lot of people get this. So, you know, I went really after this side. I was like, I'm going to go a little bit farther because what I did was I dug in there you can see it from the side, which created an area of thinness right here. So now there's like too much definition between the tip and the heart. And the front of the tip, what's in front of the, the blend area is too thin. So now we're getting the bird. And when you look at it, you can, I mean, you can tell. I really dug in there just to prove a point. So that I'm going to get the sound. Okay, that hurts your ears, right? But don't panic and don't freak out. You just have to smooth it out and correct it. And the way to do that is just be careful about putting where you put your knife down. So since this area is where the smooth stuff, or where the smooth, goodness, where the thin part is, I'm going to start a little behind that and I'm just going to blend it in. So this essentially is going to make the tip a little longer, but who cares at this point? I've just started this read. But if I don't take care of that bird now, it's only going to get harder to get rid of as you keep going. So again, I'm just kind of smoothing that down there, taking the top of the heart lengthening the blend. And if you change the blend on one blade, you have to make sure that it still kind of matches what's on the other. So that's what I'm doing here. It's just trying to get them to match. Okay. That 
that's a little better. Okay. Now, and you can also hear in that crow how there's a tiny bit of low crow coming in. That's because I've lengthened the transition between the blend, the heart and the tip. Sorry, I've lengthened the transition between the tip and the heart so that the blend is longer. And that means things are going to vibrate more quickly and you're going to start hearing the low crow come in. So here's what it looks like now. Still not quite 100% on this side, but we're going to let that go and hope for the best. <laughs> and now we're on a flat D, which is good. Okay, so now let's get the rest of the reed vibrating. Everybody's like, probably like, oh my God, she spent so long on the tip. Trust me, it's worth it. If you get the tip and the blend area set, man, the rest of the read just goes together so easily. She says optimistically. All right, so here we go. When I start in the blend and the heart, again, I do the same thing that I did in the tip. I start up here, right at the top of the blend, and lengthen back. Because the one thing you do not want is what we call a muffin top where the top of, of the heart is thicker than the back of the heart. And when you look at the profile, you'll see kind of like, like a little muffin top between the tip and the heart. So again, I start at the top and blend back. Okay, I wanna keep my spine nice and straight. Okay, turn it over and this is that side where I really so I'm gonna have to be careful I can tell just right now that the back of the tip is still a little bit thinner if I hold it like that you can kind of see it as opposed to this side much better this side we're gonna have some problems but that's okay all in the service of greater good and greater read making good Lengthen back. Can the blend be too smooth? Yes, it can. And I think after figuring out how to thin the tip and how to put in a V, the next area of reed making that is the most critical is what happens between the tip and the heart. And depending on how your embouchure is set up and the instrument you play and the amount of air you use, that transition area is gonna be very um, individualized for each person. It has a lot to do, the blend area has a lot to do with pitch and stability, um, particularly in your second and third octave. All right, let's see if we've got any lows coming in. Yeah, nice. And that's what I expect to have happen. It's going to drop the pitch. The lows are there. They're not real strong. And then what I always do is check my closing so that I can see, okay, is there a blade that's like a little stronger than the other? You want it to close from the outside edges in, which it's doing, but that's not enough low crow for me. So I am going to just keep going and take more out of the heart. It's not, I'm close, but it just needs a little bit more love. I'm 
Now again, this is a rough scrape read. The only thing that's happened prior to me doing this is that I've broken through the bark in the back. So there hasn't been a true back put in yet. I don't do that until I have a good relationship between the tip and the heart, which is a little bit different than what some people do. Some people like to go into the back right away. There's nothing wrong with that. It all just, you know, it's all a personal thing. I just find that my reads are more consistent and work better when I do it this way. Okay, good. That's nice. We like it. We like it. And you know what? We're also going to clip it because it's firmly in B territory. And before I put the back in, I want to be in the realm of a C. I'm sorry. I have to clip off camera because I can't position the camera and see my clipping. And I'm, I, I yeah, can't. I just got to do it this way. So my apologies. But hopefully those of you that are watching are comfortable with clipping. Someday I'll figure out how to do that. Maybe someday I'll get like fancy recording equipment. I do all of this on my phone. I mean, I'm about as low tech as it gets. Okay, so I've clipped it. Had a little bit of gum being happen. But I corrected that. And now... I'm up to a C sharp, but I'm also like resistant. And the low crow, that rumble and the warmth in the low crow is not where I want it to be. So guess what? Now we get to go back up to our tip and kind of get it more where we want it to be. Bring the pitch down, get the response better, get the lows going. Kind of like they were before so that we can comfortably go into the back. And at this point, I can tell on this read that this blade is definitely thicker. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, work a little bit more on the tip of the tip, on the tip of this one. I'm letting, kind of letting my knife find the cane that's sticking up. So I'm trying not to use a lot of pressure so that it can kind of scrape off that cane. If you're wondering why I do wait on putting the back in, it's because in my experience and the way that I make the read, the back will release the lows, make, give me lots of low crow, which I love, and it supports your high notes, which is, uh, great and it also when you take can out of the back it closes up the tip so if your tip that relationship of highs and lows in the between the tip and the heart isn't kind of in the ballpark of where you want it and you put the back in you're kind of locking up the reed so to speak in a way that I that I've always felt is limiting in terms of my ability to then play with a lot of dynamics and a lot of color in my sound so I tend to add the back in after I've got the tip and the heart sorted out. Am I still on camera? Oh, yeah, I am. Okay. Because um, it's, it's just what works for me. And the other cool thing is when you do that, you can play on a read that has just the tip and the heart, you know, mapped out um, and vibrating. And it won't sound so bad. That's kind of how I discovered it, was getting the tip and the heart um, balanced correctly, which was a concept I learned from Peter Cooper, and then slowly adding in the heart, because I, or I mean the heart, sorry, slowly adding in the back, because for years people told me, put it back in the reed, and you read about it, put the back in the reed, it's the windows, um, it adds depth and darkness and tone, which is all true, but that was the extent of my knowledge of what the back did. And I just was not content with that. I wanted to figure out what the back does. And so that's why I sort of do it that way. It allows me to sort of fine tune things in a way 
that is different than just, okay, I'm putting it back in because the measurements say it should be this long and it should be placed at this point on the reed and because it looks like it needs one. Sometimes I have reeds that have very little out of the back. Sometimes I have reeds that have tons out of the back. Tons on the piece of cane, the gouge, all that stuff. Okay. A little bit better, but not perfect. So now we're going to work on the naughty side, the side that's got the little extra stuff out of the back of the tip. So what I'm doing, and I don't think it's coming through on the camera, it probably isn't because I would need a slightly different angle to show this. I'm starting behind the thinnest part of the back of the tip. I'm not starting on the thinnest part of the back of the tip. I'm starting a little behind it. Because again, the back of that tip is pretty darn thin. I don't need to take any more out of there. What I need to do is convince it that the rest of it is thin. Look at all that cane. Good Lord have mercy. You are hiding. There we go. Hint of a whistle in there. think that we can get more cane off on this one. There we go. cane almost feels a little bit it's hard which is nice but it feels a little glassy um, which kind of concerns me a little bit I don't like that pop either that sort of um So now what I'm doing is I'm looking at it. Oh, God, this, this side just looks so weird. This is one of the hazards of doing it this way. I really should have it better set up so that my, what you're seeing is more, or what I'm seeing when I scrape is more like what I normally look at. I'm not going to lie. It's a little tricky to do this on camera, which is why I don't usually... Or I don't show a lot of videos with me using my knife because it's just hard to see around the around my phone. And let me tell you, I rarely set my hand on the desk. When I hold the reed to scrape on it, I hold it up to me. I don't hold it down and put my hands or elbows on the table um, because that tends to lock in your angles of your knife and how you're using it which can sometimes cause just weird problems. But I'm doing it that way for you because of the camera situation. Okay, now I'm getting cane off. That's good. Okay. So it's getting a little wild, which is okay. I'm going to go ahead and do a couple more scrapes in the heart to kind of really get the low crows to be 
where I want them. because of my zealousness with getting the tip fair enough I'm clipping it right now as we speak we're at a sharp B I want to get us up to a nice C another clip but just a hair gosh I love these gem razor blades best thing ever Love that sound where you can hear the tip just kind of slowly engage. Okay. Yes. So that sound, even though it's a flat C, it's still in the neighborhood. I'm okay. We're in the neighborhood. But we've got good, like, entry of the crow. We've got nice lows that are stable no hard how hard I blow now I'm gonna put the back in okay <laughs> and to be perfectly honest it does not normally take this long to do this <laughs> we're coming up on 33 minutes and I'm still making a read it usually takes me much less time to do this but begin because I'm on camera I'm taking my time and I'm trying to talk at the same time and see what I'm doing it's an adventure and a half what I go through for the better read making good okay so all right those of you that want the measurement um where did I put my ruler <gasps> I lost my ruler I just had it out. Did I not just have my? I did just have it out, but I don't see what I did with it. So hang on. Hold the phone. We'll use this because I have one of these. All right. So this, well, I'm going to start separating the heart from the tip about 62. 61, 62 from the bottom of the cane, which is going to be about right here. Oh, this is so hard, cane, because it's like just really substantial. So again, I just start with a little bit of. Um, it's the one time that you have to stop your your knife. Um, And I like a soft stop or a blended stop. I don't know what people will call it. That's kind of how I think of it. I don't like a hard catch. I like kind of a, a smooth catch. And again, it's the same idea of just starting to um, separate the two areas. You don't, I don't start back here and go up to stop. I like to kind of put in that stop first. And this is kind of how I started figuring out what the back did, was by doing it this way. Because I'll show you, um, or we'll listen and see 
what happened in the tip curl. So I've just got a little bit, eh, we're gonna, even at this stage, follow your own advice, Elizabeth. Follow your own advice. Even at this stage, we're gonna make sure that the profile agrees with itself so that the Catch is sort of a similar has a similar slope and it is is in a similar location on both blades. So I have to sort of raise it up a little bit on this one. So it agrees more with the other side. Okay, so I'll, that's like just starting to separate the two. Hopefully you can hear like how much more rumble and bottom crow there is just from doing the tiny little bit of a tuck. I don't know if you can see it. And by a tuck or a nip in, okay, use your fingers. Um, right here where I've taken the back in a little bit. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and full on do the back and I'll stop the stop at about, I don't know, four or five inch, inches, inches, <laughs> four or five millimeters from the thread. I really hope my students watch this. I hope they turn this on and they try to balance a read along with me. I think they would find that helpful. I will have to ask. Man, this is a hard piece of cane. I wish I had more of it. Some people don't like hard cane. I generally do because it, I feel like the reeds last a little longer. Soft cane, I think it's just like, ugh, very difficult. Okay, so I've only done one blade. It's even starting to clean up itself. So now we'll do the other side. The low crow is starting to even clean itself up a little bit. It's bringing the sides of the tip together a little bit more. Oh, geez, I'm drifting again, sorry. If you do watch this whole thing, random person from the interwebs leave me a comment let me know if this was helpful or if this was like <laughs> painfully boring it probably is painfully boring to many of you but I don't know I never know in terms of the content that I put out I never really know what's good what's bad what you like what you don't I just kind of do my thing um, but if this kind of stuff is helpful I'll do more of it That's good. And so what I'm looking at now is I'm looking at my profile and I'm kind of trying to decide how much I want to do. So you can see I've kind of scooped in there, but I haven't done very well here. So I need to kind of, I'm going to take this off camera for a split second because I just need to be able to see what I normally see so that I can fix that real quick without it being a, without having to look around the camera. And normally I can rough scrape or balance a, re balance a read in about 15 minutes, sometimes less than that. So it's kind of cracking me up that it's taking me this long to do this read, but I'm trying to be thoughtful as I do it. <laughs>
That's better. So what I did was I just really tried to make the back more uh, symmetrical, more even. Now we are firmly below C. Hang on. You know, we're firmly in B territory. And we don't want to leave it there. So I'm going to clip it up to pitch and then grab my oboe and play on it and see if it's in the ballpark. I'm not going to try to finish this read. I just want it to be in the ballpark. Tiny, 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 super thin, barely noticeable clip. Uh, you can hear the hint of that thin back of the tip. Now, as I blow harder, it kind of wants to pull the pitch down, which is a little scary. Only scary because that means that if I were to put it away right now and I take it out tomorrow, um, it would be flatter than pancake. So I am going to go up and do just a tiny bit of finishing work on the tip. You can tell by looking here that this is that side that has the wonky back of the tip that's thin and the profile is not at all like this side. I want to clean that up before letting this guy um, sit. So we're going to do that now. So again, it's that weird thing about trying to um, not bring out the fact that I dug out the back of this tip. Ah, uh, there we go. I can see that a lot better. That's a lot better. La 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 better. And now, Mr. Left Side. Ooh, there you go. grab my elbow that's a lot better profile much better okay <laughs> we'll grab the elbow and we'll see what it sounds like okay I have my elbow now and I am not cheating this is gonna be <laughs> a surprise for you as it is for me so again, here's where we are we're at the balance stage where I will let it dry out and try to finish it up more tomorrow or another day this week. And we're on the flat side of a C. You know, not bad. Would I play on that in a rehearsal in the state? Hell no. Um, <laughs> and that's typical too. It's one of the reasons why the golden rule of reed making for me is that you crow, you play, you crow again, and then you scrape. Because inevitably... When you blow some air through the reed, it kind of shakes things loose a little bit. And then when you crow again, that's a much more accurate statement about what's going on with the reed. So 
So it needs another clip. It needs a clip for sure. And then it needs just some tip refinement. You can probably hear in the recording how it sounds uh, maybe reedy or fuzzy. Um, and that's because there's still some unevenness in the tip. Sorry if that got a little loud for a second. I got a little close to the microphone. All right. So just clipping it. So clipping it helped with that, but again, now it's a little bit stiff. It's a little bit um, non-resistant. But it's holding its own in terms of the of the clip. So truth be told, I will probably, I'm going to go off camera now and just do a couple little things to the tip to kind of dial it in more. And then I would let it sit like this and do the rest of the work tomorrow. So I hope um, that was somewhat helpful. Let me show you the backlit of where this read is at. I, th I feel like I went too far in the... Um, and you're gonna see my tree. Chaotic. Oops, sorry. Studio right now. I feel like I took a little, I went a little bit too far in the back at this stage for where the tip was. But that's what it looks like. I mean, it's in the ballpark. Um, but I am gonna go up and clean up the reed. I'm gonna kind of look at the blend area and so you can see that V is off center. That's a big no-no. Looks pretty good on this blade, which was the one that had the um, back of the tip was shorter. So you can even see from this angle how it has sort of like two transitions because um, I was trying to get rid of that. But the one that doesn't have that, I've got to fix that. Um, for you, you're looking at it, the left side of the V, really asymmetrical. That's what's causing that. The other thing that I really like about this angle is it shows me proportion of heart to back and my heart is way too big on this blade it's i like the way it's sort of placed on this one i like the back to be longer than the heart so i've got to adjust those two things and that's going to take care of a lot of stuff so I will stitch those two clips together, and that's pretty much what I do when I balance a reed. Enjoy. Let me know if you have any questions. Okay, update. So I um, went in, and I really paid close attention to what was happening with the V, and I really corrected the V on um, the one blade so that it was much more symmetrical um, and in line with what was on the opposite blade. And now here's our crow. And now when I play on it, night and day it's got some zing in it it's zingy which is good and please know that if those of you think man she just blasts through these reeds I do I play honky-tonk reed when I'm testing reeds which is like I blow really hard and I try to be as open as I can with my embouchure because I want to know that the reed's going to hold together so and I will articulate really hard because I want to find out if Something's going to bark back at me. Um, for me, the time to really be somewhat aggressive is when I'm testing the reed. Because, again, I want the reed to do the work. But now I will let this one leave alone. And here I will show you again. So 
sorry, because I think it looks it's easier for you to see. So now there's the one side that had the thin, the back of the tip was thinner. And now there's this one. So it's still, uh, still not really perfect, but it is much better. It still doesn't have the nice peak, but it's close enough. And I did change slightly the back so that I got a little bit more of a longer back going. So I am now going to leave it alone. I promise. I really will. And thus concludes today's shaping experience. The profile's looking pretty good. I feel like I just went too far. In my effort to demonstrate, I went into the top of the back just a little too much. But that's okay. All right. I'm done. Really done. Have a good day, everybody. Bye.